It's hard to overstate how important 21 was to the popularization of K-pop globally. From music to iconic looks to their unapologetic girl power swagger, the so-called queens of K-pop brought fire to the stage and had fans around the world falling in love with the best. By the time of their disbandment in 2016, 21 had nearly a dozen number one hits in South Korea, were the only K-pop group to have played solo arena shows in America, collaborated with Will I Am and Jeremy Scott, and held a slew of Billboard record charts in America. While 21 could dance and sing with the best, what set them apart was their individuality, versatile style, and the message of empowerment that served as a foundation for their music. They taught their fans that it was okay to be themselves, even if that meant being ugly, vulnerable, sad, lonely, a totally relatable human being. They were stylistic chameleons, doing everything from songs about rejection and insecurity to glamorous, glossy queens serving up girl crush confidence in high-budget MVs, to down-to-earth girls next door just goofing off and having fun. So when it came time to pass the gauntlet to YG's next girl group, the formidable Blackpink, how did we end up with this same concept every time? Now, I want to be clear that I'm not trying to hate. Blackpink undeniably puts out bangers, top the charts every time, and I'll readily identifies a blink cause uh, <laughs> check the receipts. But I'm not the first, nor the last, fan to point out that Blackpink's releases look and sound a little similar. Blackpink is compared to 21 a lot, rightfully so, as YG intentionally marketed them as a prettier version of 21. But the lack of variety in Blackpink's music is a big departure from their predecessor. I can't help but think this shift in direction occurred as a result of YG's controversial treatment of 21 that led to their unprecedented disbandment and rushed transition to Blackpink. And with the debut of Baby Monster on the horizon, the future of Blackpink isn't black and white. Let's dive into the details, shall we? In order to understand why YG's founder and then CEO, Yang Hyun Suk, cared so much about Blackpink's visuals, we have to talk about 21's relationship with K-pop beauty standards as a leading girl group in the second generation. Idol culture pushes the image of perfection, to be an enviable being inside and maybe more importantly, outside. Part of K-pop's appeal are these idol gods, whose untouchable aura puts them above normal people, but also invites callous criticisms as if they weren't actually human beings with feelings. Feelings. But 21 embraced the flaws that made them human. They were idols that led by example, rather than ideals. The members of 21 are all beautiful women with unmatched charisma, but because they didn't fit into conventional beauty standards, 21 was called the ugliest girl group by the public, and even worse, by their own CEO. On the Strongheart YG family special, CL recalls, YG came to a concert rehearsal once. When we do a rehearsal, we don't put on any makeup. He looked from afar into the screen and said, ah, they really are ugly. In front of all the staff, I was a bit disappointed. Could you imagine how humiliating it must have been for a CEO to publicly insult his own girl group as YG did repeatedly on 21 TV? It's an abuse of power that suggests YG's support of the group was less than wholehearted, and his poor behavior set a precedent for the way fans would treat them. How could you expect audiences to respect you when your own company doesn't? True to their irrepressible spirit though, 21 rose above and reclaimed the situation. They embraced the criticisms and put out the powerfully vulnerable single, Ugly. Ugly is a pop rock anthem about feeling small and unloved as an ugly person, being constantly compared to prettier idols. If you're a later gen fan or a blink, you might wonder how this was even allowed, considering how tightly controlled girl group images are nowadays. Back then, says CL, artists had more creative control over the music. There was more room for personal experimentation, so 21 made their voices heard. To their haters' dismay, Ugly became the second highest selling single domestically after their international breakthrough hit, I Am The Best, followed closely by Lonely, another single that showcases 21's knack for bearing their raw emotions through their music. It shows that deep down, even in a place with sky-high standards like South Korea, we all just want to be seen for who we are. Not everyone can be a visual goddess, but we've all felt like the ugliest person in the room, longing to be as pretty as someone who probably has the same insecurities. I'm not saying Blackpink's music doesn't contain darker emotions, but there always seems to be a romantic veneer over it. The members cry and sing about being messed up and alienated, 
but they're always depicted in such a way that glamorizes the pain, makes them seem untouchable. But 21's darkness is different, raw. Ciel's abuse scene in Go Away caused a commotion when it premiered, but it showed that the group wasn't afraid to get real, and their company wasn't afraid to let them, either. They tap into the ugly, yet human urge to doubt yourself. At the same time, the way 21 rejects expectations in their MVs and in their career shows that you can still believe in yourself while experiencing moments of doubt. Love interest ignores you? Tell them you don't care. Crappy ex doesn't want you? Make them go away. At the end of the day, having self-esteem means you can still say you're the best. It's a more realistic and nuanced take on reality that teaches us about how to navigate an often harsh world with confidence and resilience. Of course, it's tough to be tough, and lessons come at a price. Behind the scenes, the criticism caused significant emotional harm to the members. In an interview with Billboard after leaving the group, Minzy expressed, People, netizens, were critiquing the fact that, you know, we were not the prettiest group. We were the ugly group. I didn't know how to process that. I held that in. It was tough. We pretended it was not a big deal and tried to forget about it, but you can't forget about that. It's tough. Minzy, who was an impressionable teenager at the time, revealed that she suffered from severe depression from the insults that would trigger a downward spiral, contributing to the group's eventual disbandment. Netizens will wholeheartedly blame other member controversies, but the reality is far more complex than what we'd like to believe. It's true that YG started off giving 21 liberal creative control over their music, but that changed after a slew of scandals that, in my opinion, would impact the way YG treats their girl groups in future generations. In November 2016, YG Entertainment shocked the world by announcing the disbandment of 21. Fans were surprised by the news as 21 had just delivered what many considered an iconic performance at the 2015 MAMA Awards and was at the height of their career. While Minzy had already terminated her contract in May 2015, after the MAMA performance in December, the group had been planning on returning as a three-member act. Little information was disclosed, except that the decision came after extensive discussion with the remaining members, and everyone felt it was better for the members to pursue solo careers. The truth wasn't revealed until December 2021, five years after the official disbandment. In an interview with AP Entertainment, CL disclosed that YG had unilaterally disbanded 21 without consulting the members. What? More yet, CL had only found out about the disbandment through the media, similarly to Minzy, who had apparently reported the same thing months before. CL said, I was at a Thanksgiving dinner and my phone blew up. But yeah, those situations, that was very heartbreaking for me. What the fuck is this? So YG essentially lied about having discussed the disbandment with the group, demonstrating how little regard they have for the media, their fans, and their own employees. It soon became clear that interpersonal tensions between YG and 21 led to the controversial events surrounding the disbandment. In a bombshell report published on YouTube by entertainment reporter Yi Jing Ho, Yi reports that YG gave up on 21 because the label had a difficult time controlling one member. Let that sink in. YG did not want to continue with 21 because they could not deal with conflicting ideas. Ironic, as rebellion and individualism are constant themes in YG's music, which itself borrows heavily from hip-hop, a genre historically rooted in anti-authoritarianism and rule-breaking. I'm not saying this means YG should have just rolled over and let 21 do whatever they wanted, but the way that this was framed as a matter of control is unprofessional and degrading. This isn't how adults handle things. Lee goes on to reveal that YG had forced the member in question to write a handwritten note promising to focus on promotions, but she was unable to keep her promise, and suggested that the member wanted to prioritize her solo career. I'm sure that had some truth to it, as Minzy also suggested she was disappointed at not having been able to do more solo activities under YG, but plenty of idols have solos and stay within their groups, YG artists included. CL, who many speculated was the contentious member, because I mean, have you heard her solo stuff? Expressed in an interview how she had a strong desire to take responsibility during the disbandment as the leader of the group, which may hint at her being the one YG targeted. Even so, it's clear from the emotional interview that she wanted 21 to continue on, so I highly doubt she was willing to trade the group for more solo opportunities. 
The whole handwritten note punishment feels like a weird and patronizing way to exert power over grown women who should have been allowed to express their artistic opinions without fear of being put in detention. Especially because 21's ideas helped launch their career. The member who YG had difficulty controlling has never been revealed. And while there's widespread speculation from the public about it, I don't think that it ultimately matters. It doesn't excuse the way YG treated the group. So what happened that soured the relationship between 21 and YG? Although one member was blamed, I think it was ultimately a string of events involving multiple members that gradually snowballed into a greater disaster. The incident that many associate with the beginning of the end of 21 involved Park Palm allegedly smuggling approximately 80 pills of amphetamines to her mother and grandmother in Korea from the United States. To YG's credit, the agency reacted quickly to release an official statement defending Park Palm the next day. It's just the story YG gave was a little convoluted. In the several paragraphs long statement, YG goes into how he met Bomb, how she was finally accepted as a trainee after several failed auditions, and just a lot of background that I don't think we needed, to be honest. He finally goes on to say that he spoke to Bomb's father personally and learned that she had experienced a traumatizing incident as a child in the US. Something about seeing a friend die in a soccer match and was prescribed the drugs later on to help her cope with what I guess would be PTSD, though her condition is never named. Although YG defended their artist, which is more than I can say for some other companies, it was a kind of strange and chaotic story, especially considering PTSD isn't usually treated with amphetamines. It made a lot more sense when, years later, Bomb clarified that she had actually been diagnosed with ADHD while she was living in the States, and had been prescribed Adderall by an American doctor to treat it. Obviously I'm biased, but it's just kind of silly because here in the US, Adderall abuse usually looks like a college student trying to finish their history midterm after hitting the Alpha Kappa Alpha party too hard. Unable to get the prescription filled in Korea due to the authorities treating them as, you know, hard drugs, she had mailed the medicine to her relatives to hold onto for her. This is a much simpler and believable explanation as it's estimated that 1 in 20 people have ADHD. It's not uncommon. Mental health isn't well understood in Korea. It could be that YG thought that a sob story about a dead childhood friend would appeal more to the public's sympathy than a claim about mental illness. We don't know the truth, but honestly, I think YG's complicated narrative made things worse. It might have been a true story, but even if it was, YG shouldn't have been the one to tell it. The story is intentionally vague to elude controversy, <laughs> but he also could have just told the truth and said that she had a chemical imbalance that needed to be treated with medication. Despite Palm providing medical records and being cleared of all charges almost immediately, netizens would continue the witch hunt for years, resulting in 21 being put on hiatus. Idol drug abuse is a big deal in conservative South Korea. On a broadcast of PD Notebook in 2018, Bomb recalled that the hate she received was so bad that she hadn't bought new clothes in five years because she was so afraid of going out and being harassed. Despite the controversy, it seems that Bomb herself harbors no ill will for YG. She says, I am thankful to YG, which has raised me, and I also want to express my gratitude to producer Yang Hyun Suk. Other people ask if I feel hatred towards them, but that is not true at all. It's wonderful that Balm doesn't hold on to any anger for her former agency, but netizens and the media can't bring themselves to forgive so easily. The incident was still top of mind nearly two years later, in April 2016, when it was announced that Minzy had failed to renew her contract and left the group. In a later interview, CL would reveal that she had written the lyrics of Goodbye, 21's final release together, to Minzy, begging her to stay. Notably, Balm's verse contains the lyrics, Don't trust the broken stories, don't lose faith, the promises we made together come to mind, which some fans theorize refer to the drug smuggling incident and the seemingly outsized press coverage of it. It seems the scandal and subsequent hiatus had all been too much for Minzy, along with her depression and feeling lost after having debuted so young. Many fans theorize that 21's performance at MAMA had been a test run to see if South Koreans were ready for a comeback. Yet, the comments calling for Park Palm's resignation after Minzy left showed that the waters weren't clear yet, and sadly, never would be. The mob was thirsty for blood and the pressure was on. It was reported that it became a matter of YG's pride to prove 21 was still current after Minzy's departure. With Palm's scandal still weighing on the group's reputation and the added stress of an unnamed member YG couldn't control, YG finally cracked and decided to call it quits. 
It's sad. In the press release for Minzy's departure, YG had declared, let's gather together and be strong and overcome this. Yet things had gone so badly that he couldn't bring himself to sit down with the remaining members and talk through the situation. He could have at least warned them of the disbandment after everything they've been through. Instead, YG took the petty route and unilaterally terminated the group, lied to the press about the members' awareness of it, and turned to a younger, more malleable group to promote. While this may all seem like it's in the past, I think it's important to pay attention to the way YG handled the controversies, as it made him more cautious and changed the way the company handled their idols moving forward. The controversy surrounding 21's disbandment solidified YG's idea that he needed a girl group that was fresher to the industry, more universally appealing, and, importantly, easier to predict. On August 8, 2016, YG debuted their new girl group, Blackpink, earlier than expected in response to the recent disbandment of 21. YG made it crystal clear that he was positioning the group as the successors of the legendary girl group that he just ended. At a press conference held in Moss Stadium in Gangnam, Seoul, YG stated, If you ask me to distinguish Blackpink from 21, I want to say I did not try to make them different. If you ask me what differentiates them from other groups, I will say I did not form them with that in mind. I tried to make the YG version of a girl group like I did with 21, but this time I wanted the girls to look pretty with skills. Not only did the statement make plain YG's insecurities about 21's visuals, it revealed that his vision for Blackpink was not to create a unique group with a different concept to 21, but to build what he perceived to be a better version of what had come before. He went on to confirm that Teddy, the main producer for 21, would be writing songs for Blackpink as well. But it has a different feeling when different persons wear the same clothes, he said. Two teams have different voices and different faces. By using the analogy of wearing the same clothes, YG is directly comparing the two groups and, again, throwing shade at 21's visuals, failing to recognize what an amazing thing the girl group did for beauty standards. When fans asked about 21, YG would redirect them to Blackpink, suggesting that fans should just forget about 21 since there was a newer, shinier version on the market. Essentially, to YG, Blackpink isn't a different group from 21, they're a more marketable version of the same group. But what's the problem with this? It makes sense on some levels. YG is prioritizing building a consistent brand for the company over unique concepts. It's a safer, lower maintenance approach than juggling multiple comebacks and concepts. And clearly, it's a commercially viable plan. Giving Blackpink a signature sound and look ensure that each comeback is consistently a hit. The long hiatuses between comebacks even work to the group's advantage, as it reduces the sense of redundancy between releases, hedging on fans to forget what the last song sounded like, so each single sounds fresh. Yet the plan is flawed in major ways. One is that it treats groups as disposable, and two, it fundamentally ignores what was great about 21 to begin with. If YG had intended Blackpink to be a replacement for 21, then they failed to recapture what made 21's music resonate with so many people. Vulnerability. While 21 sang about a spectrum of emotions, preaching resilience in the face of self-doubt, Blackpink's version of bitterness just kind of grazes the surface in comparison. The best way I can describe this is Gretchen Wieners doing trust exercises in Mean Girls. I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me, but I can't help it that I'm popular. Oh my While it seems like Gretchen is trying to open up, she's really just reminding everyone of how much better she is than them. I kind of get the same vibe from Blackpink's music. Their angst is rooted in the fact that it's lonely to be the hottest, baddest girl at the top. Cool, I'm so jealous. And again, there's nothing wrong with liking Blackpink's music. I like Blackpink's music. Confidence building music like this is such a vibe. Pop doesn't have to be deep to be fun and feel empowering. Honestly, YG's rationale is understandable. Like with real feelings, there's merit to establishing boundaries, especially for a company like YG that's been plagued by controversy, 21 being just the tip of the iceberg. I won't get into all the scandals here, but know they were bad enough that Young Hyuk Suk needed to formally step down as CEO in June 2019. With Blackpink being the main bacon bringer at YG, it makes sense why they just want to play it safe for them. The company's very existence is at stake. With Blackpink, YG just wants to put out a consistent product in which people can depend on, keep up a steady flow of revenue while building their brand globally. No surprises, good press only, viewer controversies. 
What we fans have to be aware of though is what happens when members start expressing themselves and wanting to deviate from this consistent image, as 21 had, and as is natural for veteran groups. When 21 strayed too far from the company's control over them, YG felt justified in unilaterally disbanding and then building back a better version of them, even though the members had wanted to come back. The talented members of Blackpink especially are known for their solo activities and promotions. As they grow as performers, they also mature as people and are bound to have ideas of their own, as they should. With the members' contracts ending in the latter half of 2023 and the seven-year curse bearing down upon them, there's widespread speculation on whether they will renew with YG. 2022 was a record-breaking year for Blackpink, with a new album, world tour, and worldwide recognition from mainstream news outlets. But it was also filled with rumors of members wanting to go solo, infighting, tour hiccups, and even a label change. While most of these turned out to be baseless rumors, the continuous buzz indicates that the public senses something is up with Blackpink. Maybe it's just the price of fame, but we don't see this level of gossip for other major girl groups who have better relationships with their labels. The crux is, YG has never had two active girl groups at the same time. They've so far proven that only one group can stand as the YG version of a girl group. With one concept, one producer, and one controlling CEO who just came back into the picture, it's hard to imagine how more than one girl group can exist under YG without one cannibalizing the others. Which brings us to our next topic. On January 1st, 2023, YG released a teaser video for their fourth generation girl group, Baby Monster. And the first thing they tell us about them? By now, it shouldn't be a surprise that YG is once again prioritizing their brand before the group. The backtrack says it all. Yeah, that's right, YG is pretty proud of themselves for the highly original master plan to get conventionally attractive idols to put out emotionally opaque music sporadically once the public's forgotten about how similar that last song sounded. <laughs> this article in KBiz Zoom about the commentary in the teaser says it best. Whilst these statements were supposed to stimulate interest in the group, many found them to be self-praise, especially when no reason was disclosed for such confidence. I think we can all agree that it's kind of cocky for YG to believe that their selling point is YG. In fact, Young Hyuk Suk has decided to return as executive producer of YG so that he could personally present Baby Monster to the world. I guess they thought it was safe since he was cleared of blackmail charges from the Burning Sun scandal back in December, but damn, they really didn't waste any time. It's reported that Young's return signified that the agency was in dire need of a leader who can save its skin. But is YG struggling? Isn't Blackpink like the biggest girl group in the world right now? Analyst Park Ha Kyung says, the company's shares had been falling due to its dependence on a single artist, Blackpink, and it is unclear as to whether they will renew their contract with the agency. That's right, YG's golden goose is running loose. Remember when YG used Blackpink's debut as a way to deflect bad press about 21's breakup? Well, the news of Baby Monster's arrival just happened to come at the same time as a mass artist exodus. As of January 2023, all six members of Icon and all but one member of Big Bang have ended their contracts with YG. But the big kicker? The Korea Herald reporting that Blackpink was moving to Teddy's The Black Label. Even though YG denied the rumor, the fact that Big Bang's Taeyang actually did join the Black Label made the rumors all the more plausible. But YG's experience with the misdirect. To distract fans and stakeholders from the bad news, they debuted a new girl group. Never mind the fact that even their name, Baby Monster, is a recycled working name for Blackpink. It's just kind of wild that YG is relying on Young to save their skin because he's just doing the same song and dance as always. The Korean opinion news site, Tahom, said this, YG entertainment is getting outdated. Times and generations have changed, but YG is still standing still. The company no longer provides fresh content, so expectations are low. There are still certain changes in YG's marketing and publicity tactics, but overall, they still circulate in their own predictable world. To illustrate, many people have commented on the similarities between the Baby Monster teaser and another girl group YG teased 11 years ago. The working title of that group? Future 21. Highly original. The group never debuted, but it's kind of mind-blowing how much the teaser has in common with Baby Monster. Throwback dance covers of Top 40's hip hop, highlight reels of the vocalists, uncomfortably underage trainees. It's the same approach as what they put out 11 years ago, a millennium in K-pop terms. 
but by avoiding experimentation, isn't YG just shooting themselves in the foot? With the debut of so many fourth generation girl groups who can be called monsters in their own right, how is YG going to keep up by doing the same tired thing over and over in the name of self-preservation, mistreating their talent in the process? Things could change if YG expanded its talent pool, brought in more producers and creatives, as well as allowed the artists to have a voice in their music. They could bring fresher ideas to the table and much needed diversity to their concepts. Times change and it's time to give creative control to a younger generation. I never thought I'd be defending Isu Mon, but kind of based of him to step down from SM in order to make way for new talent. But Yang Hyuk Suk has not demonstrated that he wants to relinquish control. He's been burned before by 21, especially with the one member he couldn't control. And why would he with how successful Blackpink has been? Even though 21 built the foundation Blackpink now stands on, Yang attributes their success to himself and his controlling tendencies. He now feels he needs to micromanage Baby Monster. And to be honest, I think they're going to be a hit. Judging from Blackpink's success, the past is quickly forgotten in the blisteringly fast K-pop news cycle. Things don't look good for Blackpink renewing under YG, but I'm not worried about the members. They're immensely talented, pioneered luxury brand ambassadorships in K-pop, and have made a lasting mark on the industry. Judging by the offers they're already receiving, I think the ladies will do just fine without YG, whether or not they decide to continue on as a group or as soloists. What I really want the fans to ask ourselves is if we're really okay rewarding YG once again for their controlling tactics and conservative approach to management. YG used to work collaboratively with their artists. 21's music and style were so influential because they told raw stories about real human beings, facilitated by YG's management that bundled it all up into a catchy package. But now YG has lost its way. They need to reflect on what 21 taught us, that having a strong sense of identity is possible, even while you're experimenting with new ideas. No matter how much YG wants his groups to be untouchably perfect, you can't make an impact if you don't get ugly. Relying on the same ideas and refusing to change with the times, it's not a good look. Hey, if you're still here, thanks for watching. Thank you also to everyone who left encouraging comments on my FX video. I apologize for not updating sooner, but I want to try to make more videos this year. Thanks again and take care.